Hey everyone, welcome back to another Unreal C++ tutorial. Again, we'll be taking a look at a single topic, and this one will be covering interfaces. If you're here, you're probably aware of what interfaces are and where you may want to use them. Brief overview, though, is they provide a very simple way to have some agnostic kind of class communication between multiple classes that may not quite fit inheritance, but will have some similar functionality, such as things which can all be interacted with, may not necessarily be an interactable class. You can therefore create an interact interface, which is what we'll be creating today. And then inside of any class which implements the interface, they can have their own very unique functionality, but anything can call those classes and just assume or check that they have that interface available. So to begin, we're gonna go into our C++ classes. As I've done in the past, I will be utilizing some of the existing functionality within the project. For this, I'll once again be using the character base class just because I already have that implemented in the world. I'm also gonna go back to one of the components. I'll be using the line trace component. So you may want to check that video, but this is just a way to very quickly, because it's doing a trace into the world, I'm gonna use that to call the function on the interface. The main thing about the actual interfaces themselves though, that can all be followed along from scratch. So to get started, we'll just create a new class as always. The interfaces in here can be found at the bottom, so under the Unreal Interface. I'll place this into its own separate folder called Interfaces, and I'll call this one the Interact Interface. With that done, we can just hit Create Class and let the engine do its thing. When that's finished compiling, we will have a class very much like any other in the header and the code file. The main difference with interfaces is that they do not have their own C++ or code file implementation. The way that we'll be using these is we add, as the comment already says here, we'll be adding our function declaration in the interface, and then the classes which will implement the interfaces will actually have the definitions of these functions. The other thing that I wanted to cover is that there's a very standard way that you'll see these implemented, so I'll show that way, and there's a way that we can use this without having any blueprint. The first one I'll be showing is a very standard way that you'll see interfaces implemented. So I'm going to do this with a void function named interact. You'll then usually see this implemented with a U function. And then inside of the U function, you'll usually see that the blueprint native event specifier is used. I'll also give this a category, but of course the blueprint native event specifier here is indicating that we'll also be using this in blueprint. And it means that when we put this into our class that will be using the interface functions, we'll be using the implementation function rather than just the kind of native pure function. So I'm also going to show the other way that we can do this. I'm going to create another function of type void named interact pure. So this is just in case you wanted to do the same sort of thing, but without the requirement for blueprint functionality and having that implementation version. We still need this to use the U function specifier though. The same means that we need to specify our function as being virtual so that the class that will be implementing our interface on will know that it's going to override this function named interact pure. The other thing that we can do, because we know that we won't have any class definitions here, so we're not going to place anything inside of the interface code file, we can set this to be equal to zero, which means when we're compiling this, it will know not to look for the interact pure definition in the code file of the interface. Again, this will be in the code file of the class using the interface. Okay, so the next step is inside of the class that you want to implement the interface. So to have this callable function, we need to do something at the top of the class. We need to add to the signature here, a comma, and then the declaration of public and the name of the interface that we've called this. So this is going to be I interact interface because interfaces are always prefixed with an I. Inside of Rider, this automatically knows that the include is meant to be put up here. Uh, if you're using Visual Studio or something else, you may need to use the include here. So the next important thing is when you have the interface declared as being included in this class, we then need to make sure that we have a definition of every different function which is included within that interface. If you don't do that, that can cause problems. So we're just gonna come down here. I'm gonna put these in the public section. And remember, we have those two different functions. So the first one was our blueprint native event. So remember, this is a function which won't have its own C++ functionality. It's going to expect this to be done in blueprint, but we will have the option to use the implementation. So this will be our void interact underscore implementation. And of course, we want to specify that we'll be overriding this as well. 
And just a reminder that this is going to give us a Blueprint function if we have a class deriving this in Blueprint for the character class. Next, we need to make sure that we include the pure version. So this will be a virtual void, and that was interact pure, and we're going to call the interact pure override. And again, just a reminder that this will be our C++ only version. So we now want to get both of these and make an implementation in the code file. So I'm just using again the Rider automation here to generate the implementation. This will automatically create the functions inside of the code file. And this is where we're going to put the functionality or any of the classes which are calling the function, making that message from the interface to the class that they're housed on. So I'm going to keep this nice and simple. I'm just going to provide these as message logs. And the main thing is checking how these are going to be called and when they're going to be implemented in the world at runtime. So for the interact implementation, I'll just place a UE underscore log of type log temp and warning. And then the text, I'll just print out implementation so that we know which version is being called. In a very similar way for the interact pure function, it'll be the same types again, but the text will just print pure this time. Now the final step is to get something to call these. This, like I said, I'm going to use an existing class that I have here or a component. You could do this as an interact class if you had a door or a chest or something that could be interacted with, usually a character pressing E or something, that would call the message to the interface on those interactable items. So that's the way that you would normally use these. So as you can see here, I'm now in my line trace world component. If you followed the other videos in this playlist, this was the one which is just casting a line into the world. And the reason I'm using this is this is passing everything back, including the actor that it's hitting. And I can put this on an object which just spins around. So wherever the object is in the world, this is going to very easily find the character and call those functions on the interface. So where I'm going to do this, I already have the line trace being fired into the world on the event tick. So this is happening constantly. Inside of this, we're checking if we hit something. And if we do, what I want to do is I'm gonna remove this screen print message here. We don't need this anymore. And just below this, I'm going to find the actor that we've hit, check that it has a interact interface on it. And then if it does, we'll call or access one of those interface functions. Now, again, there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. So I'll show you both ways, just in case you wanted to use one over the other. So the first thing that we want to do, we're gonna get the hit actor. We'll find out what the class of that actor is. And then we're gonna check from this if it implements the interface. So these are all pre-built functionalities that we can call. We then want to check the interface type by using the static class. And we're checking that against the U interact interface, which is the one that we've created. So if this fails, it means that the object that we've just hit or the actor that we've just hit doesn't implement the interface that we're looking for. So we can probably bail out of this and not try and call any functions. If it does have that interface, then we can take the next step, which is to call a function that interface is implementing. So the first one we can try and call is the pure version. We're gonna to cast to the type of I interact interface we're going to get the hit actor and we're going to call the interact pure on that hit actor. So remember, we're not calling interact pure directly on the actor itself because we don't know what class that is. We're calling it through the interface. So the I interact interface has a function named interact pure. That's going to pass a message on to whatever type of actor that we've hit and we didn't need to cast to that actor. Now, the other option, because we also have the blueprint version uh, that has a slightly different syntax. So this, I'll just again comment that that will be calling the C++ only implementation. The syntax then for the second type is going to be again using the I interact interface. We're then going to use something which is specific to interfaces, which is the execute underscore and the name of the function, which in this case was interact. So remember we, in the interface, we had one function called interact, which had the U property with the blueprint native event and the other function called interact pure, which just had an empty U function. So this is calling the blueprint version. And again, what we're using is we're passing this message to the hit.get actor, which is whatever actor the line trace is hit. And again, this doesn't need to know the type of class so we can avoid casting there. So if we were to compile and run this now, and the line trace was to find something, both of these would work. It would call the version in the blueprint, it would call the underscore implementation, and it would call the pure version. So it should print pure, it should print implementation. And if we also had a print string in the blueprint, which I'll show at the end of this, it will also call that. As I mentioned, there's also a slightly different syntax that we can use. So I'm just gonna comment this out first of all. And we're gonna use the second syntax as another way just to demonstrate the options. And I'll go over why in just a moment. So one of the main differences that we can see here is that we are creating a new object named interface. And this is the result of casting again to the type of I interact interface and finding if that exists on the hit.get actor. 
So this way we can reuse this new object that we've just created wherever we want throughout this class as long as we've had a successful return of it here. So this is the option I tend to take just because we can saw it once here and we never need to do this line of checking every time that we want to use this again. Then this way again the, the syntax is slightly different. So the first way that we did the call was to the C++ only implementation. When we have an object of this we simply call the interface and then access the function within that interface. So interact and then call function interact pure is the equivalent of this cast here and then calling interact pure. Now the other nice thing about this is it makes the rest of the syntax very short even if we're doing the execute version. So this time it would just be interface and then the access modifier and then execute underscore interact. Then once again passing in the hit dot get actor. Because remember, whenever we want to use this implementation version, it needs to know which actor it is calling that on. So both of these options will do exactly the same thing. You can test that if you wanted. You can compile this and run it and test it with one version, comment everything out, and then test the other version. But you'll find the results are exactly the same. It's generally just a preferred syntax. And like I mentioned, for the reason that we then get this object, which is very lightweight and much easier to kind of read, I tend to prefer when working with interfaces using it this way. So when you have your preferred method, what you want to do is compile this, save everything, compile, and head back on over to the engine. So the way that I'll be using this, the line trace world is on a blueprint that I've created in a previous video. Uh, it's just a simple actor. It has the line trace component on it, and then it's going to spin in a circle and uh, it's basically just rotating continuously whilst the line trace is tracing into the world. You'll see that from this yellow line, and if I step into that, that's going to be calling the line trace, checking if it's hit something with the interactable interface on. And if it has, that will call the functionality that we've just declared in our code. So if we test this now, we should expect to see the pure and implementation UE underscore logs being printed in the log output here. So I'll just clean this and go back into the world. Wait for this to come around and hit the character. And we can see nothing actually happened there. It may just be that that's too high. I'm not 100% sure. Try again. Okay, so yeah, that was just a little bit too high. There we go. So we can see every time this hits multiple times per turn, we're getting implementation and pure. So those are being called purely through the interface. The other thing that we can do now is that the character class that we have, so I'm using my BP underscore character here. This should now also have the option to use the interact function here. So if we right click on this, we can use the implement function option. And then from this, we'll do a print string. And again, this will be called and it, this will just simply say hello whenever the line trace hits us. So we've now got this being printed up here saying hello whenever we're hit by the line trace. That's the blueprint implementation part of this. We're then having the code implementation version of this being printed down here as well through the the log outputs. So that is all of the versions of those messages being passed from another actor in the world or a component in this case to the interface and then passing that on to the owning class. So the important thing here to remember is if we go back into the code very quickly, that at no point is the line trace component checking whether we're hitting the character class or accessing functions specifically on that class. So the idea now is that I could also add this onto my pawn class. I could put this onto any of the other classes that I have in my project. And as long as they implement the interface the same way that we did in the character class where we create the implementation in the header file and then those functions which are on the interact interface and then put those functions inside of the code file to do something then this line tracing functionality will interact with any of those in exactly the same way without needing to check the classes this avoids doing things like expensive casting to check whether something's a certain type of character or a certain type of object and then trying to access functions directly in those this will just pass a message along it's essentially saying i've called your interact function whatever that is for you and then the classes themselves like we've seen in the character class can implement their own very custom unique versions of that function and just to remember that if you ever wanted to come back and use this as a reference i've shown you the two diff the, the well the two main different ways that you can generally find these there are probably other ways but these are the ones you see most often so you can always check whether the other class is implementing the interface and then call it through the hit object or the object that you currently have a reference to or you can store the interface as an object and then once you've successfully if you know you definitely have a valid reference to that interface then you can call the functions through that interface which we passed on to the owning actor.
Likewise, something that I haven't seen done in many other tutorials is that, like I mentioned, this is normally the default way that people will show you how to implement an interface function. So it's using some generic kind of void undefined function with a blueprint native event on this, just because that's, I think, the way that the documentation originally stated to do it. Uh, and if you don't use this, you will get certain errors and warnings as well if you don't have some kind of specifier in the U function here. So you can also see with this implementation a way that we can do it with a kind of pure function where nothing needs to be run through blueprint. This is really the important thing here because we want to make sure that this class is aware that it's not looking for any implementation or definition of this, sorry, in the code file. Hopefully this helps when you're working with interfaces now. They're a very powerful system to get used to inside of Unreal. They allow for some really impressive kind of flexibility between classes. They can really help improve on performance by avoiding casts to actor classes, and they also open up the flexibility flexibility for many different types of classes to implement very similar functionalities, even if they're completely different classes that wouldn't normally derive from each other. So another way to think about this actually is with the interact functionality here. If you think of something like a Zelda game uh, where you may have a set of objects which are all interactable, they would be maybe child classes of the base interactive object so that would in its own way need to be interacted with but then you also have things like npcs or other characters which can also interact the main character but of course they're not going to derive from the interact base class it's not an object that you interact with it would be a character class you could put this interface on all of those different types and that interact message can do completely different things depending on the class that it's on and the functionality you put within those definitions so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense why you may want to use something like an interface rather than just sticking purely with inheritance and the kind of derived class functionality. So of course, if you have found this interesting or useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel to grow and reach as many people as possible. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with videos like this on a weekly basis. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you get those updates. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.